So that was just a quick video reel of some of my favorite haircuts from this week in the barber shop. But without further ado, let's get started on today's topic. Today, I'm going to be talking about head shapes and why understanding head shapes is so important to enable you to create a great haircut. Oh yeah, and before I get started, I just want to announce the winner from my previous video, which was a giveaway. And congratulations to Yanalis Atkins, who are the winner of the Budget Barber Starter Kit. Uh, now, what I really liked about your comment is how you took the initiative to pull yourself away from a job that you didn't like and actually graduated hair school. So congratulations to you for graduating hair school. And I really hope that the Budget Barber Starter Kit can really help you start your journey. Congratulations. For me, in my opinion, head shapes are one of the most important concepts to wrap your mind around when you're talking about customizing a haircut for a client. Uh, now, I'm sure you and uh, maybe maybe yourself, if you're a barber, you have given a haircut based off of techniques that you've seen on YouTube, or maybe you just saw it uh, at a barber shop and you thought you'd try it out. Now, for me, in my opinion, that's what we call in the industry like a cookie cutter haircut, meaning that you're just following along steps and steps and techniques without really understanding what you're doing and why you're doing it. I'm just going to use my combs to show you a couple of a couple of different shapes that I like to use. I'm basically going to be working with either triangular shapes like this, square shapes like this, or just round shapes in general. Those three shapes, I think if you can if you can mold your your visual uh, your your eyes just to understand these shapes I think that you could go a long way uh, in your growth uh, as you're starting to become a barber. So I have a mannequin head here for you guys. Uh, now this is obviously not a male mannequin head. Uh, this is a mannequin head that we use in the shop to practice things like sectioning and braiding. So first of all, um, I want you to notice that there are fixed points in the head. I'm gonna start with what I think is the most important one and that's the parietal ridge. Uh, now the parietal ridge is very important because it separates the side of the head with the top of the head, okay? Um, and the reason why it's so important to, to figure the difference between the side and the top of the head is especially when you're working with clippers as we often do as barbers, uh, we really don't wanna be taking away from the hairstyle on top by cutting all the way up into the top of the head. So this parietal ridge is actually the border that separates the side of the head and the top of the head, especially when you're looking from, a, from the front. Now, aside from that, I have another very important point that exists on every single client, every single person. If you wanna go ahead and take a second, take your hand, put it on the back of your head and run it from the top all the way to the back, just like this. And at some point in the middle of your palm or if you're using your fingertips, you'll be able to feel something maybe sticking out or a bone structure that might have a, a not flat surface to it. What you're feeling is the O-bone, the occipital bone. Uh, short, short is O-bone. Um, it's very simply the, on top of the nape of the neck, which is just right here where the hairline starts at the bottom of your neck here. Uh, the O-bone is so important because on every person it's different. Some people have an O-bone that protrudes, like it'll actually stick out. And some people have a, a flatter O-bone. If you're deciding whether or not to do, let's say, a low fade, a mid fade, or a high fade, uh, you really want to be aware of what type of bone structure you're exposing. The head shape is going to be the deciding factor on how you visualize the haircut on someone's head. Okay, So whether that means the chin, whether that means um, the head shape from the profile or from the side. Uh, it's really important to understand what you can do in terms of techniques uh, to manipulate the hair or you might want to cut hair off or you might want to leave hair in certain areas just to make that head shape look good. So I want to go back to the mannequin and I want to show you some fixed points of reference. What I like to use in order to make sure that I can create lines of symmetry. Notice how like down here, uh, this one has a part down the middle. A really good point of reference to use if you want to make something down the middle is the eyebrows or the bridge of the nose. You could really use that center point to find that line. 
all right? Um, aside from that, we also have fixed points like the ears. Let's say I wanna go behind the ear here and uh, I wanna start dropping the fade like I did in my last video. I could easily go to the other side and drop it just behind the ear at the exact same vertical point just to make sure that my guideline is the same on the other side. Going back to the head shape, I think it's really important to understand this point right here, which is the apex. You can see that my comb is pretty much parallel to the shape of the mannequin's head. Now at the highest point of this is where I find the apex. Like the O-bone, this also changes shape from client to client. Uh, some people have a more triangular apex. Some people have a really flat and square apex. Um, some people may, might even have like a dent instead of, as an apex. Uh, so understanding that there is an apex and it's the highest point of the head is going to allow you to delegate, delegate what techniques you're going to be using throughout the haircut or throughout the hairstyle. And the last point that I really want to point out to you guys is the temple area. From the hairline, it goes down into the temple area from horizontal to vertical. And from there, I actually have here what, what I like to call the temple peak point. Whether you're doing a uh, low fade, you can see that, let's say you want to do a low fade just above the ear. You could use the ear as a reference to do a lower fade. Uh, you could use the temple peak point as a mid-reference to do a mid-fade. And you could use the parietal ridge, which I explained earlier, in order to do a higher fade. The different head shapes are going to be able to be manipulated in order to make your client uh, not only just make help you to make the right recommendation, but to help your client look like they have a customized haircut versus a cookie cutter haircut. Now, one, one example that I find often in the shop is somebody that has an O-bone that protrudes, if you don't understand that it's actually sticking out, you might take your clipper from underneath and actually hit the O-bone with your clipper. Not only that, if you notice that um, people might fade past the O-bone, and this is why I think, for the most part, I like to choose a drop fade for clients that have an oboe that sticks out, is because it actually masks the, the shape of it in order to make it just look more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, at the nape of the neck area, I, I tend to find, ha, find that some clients have a really skinny nape of the neck area where uh, the two tendons uh, tend to uh, make a dip vertically uh, in between uh, the left and the right side of the nape. Instead of trying to fade and do a low fade, let's say a low taper, it's really hard to work in an area like this because it's so small and there's so many different uh, curvatures happening around this area. So what I would like to recommend you guys is to actually just bring up the fade a little bit. It doesn't look as good when you take that really low and try to work within all these little tiny areas. The next one that I want to show you guys an example of is the Pridal Ridge. Uh, the Pridal Ridge is definitely important when you're talking about viewing the client from a front angle, right? So for me, my hair is really long, but if I was to take my hand and just run it along the side of my head, you'll see that I actually have a pretty oval shaped head. Uh, so I would actually recommend to you to, um, if somebody has an oval shaped head, is to support more weight along the parietal ridge area here. That way, instead of going inwards and going super high and exposing that oval shape, that you could actually make it look more square or actually make it look more triangular. Very simple shapes, guys. And at the end of the day, like I said, um, it's all about making it look really good and making it, not only that, but customizing it for the client to make them feel confident about themselves. When we're talking about specifically uh, men clients, uh, a lot of men clients come into the, to the barbershop in order to get their facial hair done. So it's really important to have your professional recommendation on what looks good. Believe it or not, they already trust you because they're sitting in your chair. So you have to be ready to be the one to tell them, hey, I think this looks good or, versus, hey, I don't think that would look very good. People that might want to hide their chin structure or they might want to accentuate their chin structure. I think it's a very masculine uh, look overall to just have a more square shape on your chin. Um, some people like more triangular shape to the bottom. So it's basically the same shapes that I've been talking about except reversing it and flipping it from the top to the bottom. All right guys, so that's all I have for you in terms of head shape for today. But before I leave, I actually wanna give you one super important tip. Now, I talked about in my last video the difference between the technical aspect, which in my opinion is being able to follow a video and just you know doing everything that the person is doing and saying like, okay, I did the haircut. Uh, there is a visual aspect to cutting hair. My tip for you guys today is training your eye. If you can't see something like head shapes, for example, if you can't see something like what type of hairstyle someone is wearing or, or have the terminology to understand it, 
uh, then you really can perform it to the best of your ability. Go out there and be inspired by somebody's work. Go on Instagram, type in a hashtag man's haircuts and see what comes up. See what, see out of those nine photos that are in front of you, which one attracts your eye and keep note of that. Um, at the end of the day too, I think it's very important for you to document your haircuts. So if you're gonna be doing a haircut, make sure you take pictures after, make sure you do videos because that's just your archive, your personal archive to see if you actually got better or if you're progressing. Aside from that guys, um, I really wanna get more uh, feedback from you and let me know in the comment box tell me what you guys want to see and also tell me how I'm doing because I really want to get the feedback on how to make this channel better and thank you so much again for tuning in I'll see you guys next time